We'll all be slaves in a generation. Well, it won't be called that but it will be very similar. Here's my vision of what is happening and what it will lead to. Working conditions are deteriorating. Bosses are asking employees to do more with less. Work unpaid overtime. Take on extra tasks that weren't in the job description all under thinly veiled threats of losing their jobs for non-compliance. Salaries are not increasing at a rate that can compensate for inflation. People can't afford to buy the things they need and are increasingly relying on credit to get by. Some companies have begun to offer housing assistance. I personally saw a billboard that offered reduced rent for employees. This will become more commonplace. Brands will consolidate to offer less choice and save the company's money. Eventually you will be hired on or inherit a job and work for a company for your entire career. Or as long as they want you. You will live in their houses. Buy in their stores. Visit their doctors. If you decide to leave this job you will lose all these benefits. Job switching will become non-existent. Like the company towns of old all of your earnings will return to the company. Independent business owners will cease to exist as they cannot compete and small business will disappear. Amazon will deliver everything you need. Independent landholders will cease to exist as companies buy up more and more land and more in more housing. You will be renters with no hope of owning your own land. Some land will be sold to these companies. More will be seized in eminent domain land grabs. Your education, if you receive one, will be the bare minimum of what you need to know to operate the machine you're working or complete. The task you've been assigned. Art, music and free expression will die. Don't worry though, the future overlords have planned a great few years of television and movies and content to help lull you into forgetting that all of this stuff is happening to you. You'll laugh as the father figure in a company outfit that matches yours. Does some bit and gets a canned laugh on screen. Your dream of having a robot butler will never come to fruition. If a robot is built that can complete your job you will simply be fired and replaced. I'm looking at you self-checkout aisles. There will be no minimum salary that you receive and we as a society won't be suddenly free to advance as develop since we don't have to labor. You will be out of a job and homeless while the company save a few bucks and helps its bottom line. Politicians will be unable or plain unwilling to help you. If that system even stays in place. Just like now you won't have much real choice in anything that happens. Police forces will see more funding and more militarization if not a complete merge with the armed forces. They will not be there to help you as much as they will be working to keep production going. Where's the revolt? My only objection is less choice in goods. Most Americans for decades have conflated freedom with consumer options. Especially older people it's like, wow 20 different kinds of hot sauce and 30 types of shampoo. Look how free we are. I think there will still be a veneer of freedom. Like the Duff Factory episode of The Simpsons where all three different types of Duff beer coming out. Of the same pipe. Home ownership used to be the American dream. Now it's a nightmare of rent serfdom. In Canada. Renting is like applying for a mortgage at the bank. And in many cases, the renter is paying for the landlord's mortgage or commercial loan on the rental property. We already are. The words for it are, employee, and, tenant. Bold of you to assume we're not slaves now. It's all happening now. We are all slaves saw all of that 15 years ago. The only way out is to stop giving capital the only thing it wants from us. Our labor and our rent. And you might find yourself in a beautiful house. With a beautiful wife. And you might ask yourself. Well. How did I get here? Letting the days go by. Let the water hold me down. 
letting the days go by. Water flowing underground, into the blue again, after the money's gone. Once in a lifetime, exclamation mark, water flowing underground. Bold of you to assume that the human race will still be alive much longer. You do realize that slavery really never ended in the US. Right? The wealthy slave-owning class was forced to free their slaves. But soon figured out they could just pay their workers hardly anything and rent the housing on the plantation back to them. Hardly anything changed. It got so bad that Congress said, you know, if we keep this up, those wage slaves will revolt and kill us all, and implemented some token pro-worker legislation, like safety, and a pitiful minimum wage. And make no mistake, when people complain that someone used to be able to afford a home and provide for a family on minimum wage, when complaining about today's minimum wage, it was never really the case. The federal min wage has never gone above today's equivalent of $12.50 an hour since the Depression. $12.50 could have afforded a rent with today's equivalent of about $750 a month. But, A. Good luck finding that and, B. There's no way to support a family on that. Unionize. I re-watched The Hunger Games recently and I can truly say I've never related to a movie more. Kids dying in an arena? Same as mass shootings at schools. And nothing will change. People working long hours and still starving? Yep that checks out. People in the capital living rich lavish lifestyles and constantly take from the poor? Definitely checks out. Corrupt government that relies on fear. Propaganda and intimidation to stay in power? Absolutely. We are living in a dystopia. We're just too distracted by Marvel movies to notice. We are wage slaves already. Next stop actual slavery. Bro took his first political science class. I envision the future to be some evil combination of Black Mirror. Ready Player One, Altered Carbon, and Cyberpunk. Everyone is forced to get some basic implants when born. These implants monitor your health, hold important information, etc. and will be widely accepted because of safety and security. The implants will be used to subdue or kill criminals, protesters, dissenters, etc. The rich will be essentially immortal because they have either a discovered how to reverse the aging process, b. created artificial organs, and or c. have discovered a way to upload consciousness. Entertainment will be so real and so addicting that people will be willing to work whatever menial job they are forced to so that they can get back to it. Algorithms will determine what entertainment to feed you and when to change the channel based on your attention and brainwaves. AIs will constantly be creating new things for you to consume. Hum didn't this happen in the past and we learned nothing? We are now. Independent business owners will cease to exist. Covid took care of that. You will be renters with no hope of owning your own land. That's been going on forever. The current gambit is credit scores with secret algorithms where undesirables magically have a bad score despite paying all of their bills. Brands will consolidate to offer less choice and save the company's money. LMFAO. As if choice hasn't already been eliminated in the previous 20 years. 23 options is not choice. Your dream of having a robot butler will never come to fruition. I'll just point to a movie made over three decades ago, where a robot named Johnny Five was sentient, and the college kids who programmed and remote controlled that robot for the silver screen had minimal education and training compared to today's standards. Politicians will be unable or plain unwilling to help you. So, today, 
Police forces will see more funding and more militarization if not a complete merge with the arm forces. They will not be there to help you as much as they will be working to keep production going. So, today. It's not a cop-out. And we need to actively fight this now. That said, these things seem to be cyclical. A few decades ago, workers' rights were the best they've ever been. So OFC there is pushback from corporations and people not fighting BC they don't remember what really bad looks like. As conditions worsen, more people care. Labor becomes a big ticket issue again. And we move forward. Again. This is not to suggest that things are okay. This is just to say that everything isn't bleak and hopeless. And in my mind I keep optimism with, two steps forward. One step back. Well. This just sounds like more reason to start unions and vote locally in smaller elections. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. EpicaraCast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.